Well, salutations, everyone, and welcome back to Kaiserreich, in which we're playing as the Ottoman Empire. Our little Ottoman experiment with our little focus tree here, which we're doing the Zarat Bankasi Kredit Program, and we have the paramilitary wing of the SSNP, Transamir... Well, hold on, Transamir. Good luck, Transamir. But regardless, although the immediate popular response to Sadez's party is limited at best, one cannot deny that it hasn't made a deep impression in the political scene of Syria. As opposed to the more traditional aristocratic and oligarchic parties in the cities of Damascus and Aleppo, this new organization has a central directive, a strong political message, and a limited and a limited one by a dedicated core of supporters. Parading through the streets of Beirut, the new paramilitary wing of the party is certainly a sight to behold as the Orient isn't used to this sort of militaristic and modern display of politics. Most troubling. Honestly, at this point, can we just, like, cause <clears throat> things to happen in these certain areas so that we can, like, maybe get rid of them? I'm just saying. That might be good. Let's see. Linguist is not bad. I like the extraction rate. Intel never gain strength. Force into hiding time. Minus 20%. I like that a lot, but we're gonna go... Mala. Hello, Mala. Alright, so, with Mala here. We could do, like, counterintelligence, but we're really going to be using her for putting down the Kurds, putting down the Syrians, or putting down the Greeks. Hmm. I want to do the Kurds just because... This is a lot of groups here. <laughs> That's mostly because there's three separate tiles here, so we got about of, uh, half a million, 1.6 million... So roughly 2 million people to put down here through resistance, or we have 430,000. I'm going to choose a bigger group here. So that should definitely help out with the area, right? Hmm. Very good. Keep them down. Keep them a little suppressed. And make sure we get enough compliance to put them down forever. Well, at least for as long as we can. Alright, so. Like I said earlier, this is kind of the experiment run for me, because I don't know how to do it. I haven't really paid attention too much to all of this stuff. It's medium influence, or medium hatred, or medium whatever. Medium instability. That's pretty much what it is. Cool. We have 51 political power, though. Look at that. Not bad, not bad. 0.28 a day. Could be a lot better. Restrict Arab and national newspapers. Obviously, I think... Well, I mean, obviously. But in this episode, we're probably going to go explode. Maybe. I don't know. See what happens. Ooh. Resistance struggles goes down. Trouble in Fezzan. Ooh. Unrest will decrease. That's not too bad. Ooh. Expand desalination process. I just want to do more stuff here. And actually, anything down here we can do... Decentralized authority. I actually will probably centralize more and more stuff, but trouble in Fizan. When Ottoman rules was restored to the Fizan interior during the middle of the 20s, few accepted it with open arms, and during the subsequent years, the regime in Tripoli decided that maintaining the sizable force in the region would be too costly. Returning all troops bar some small garrisons in the urban centers, this has led to an almost entirely autonomous position for the local tribes. They remain discontent, however, and influenced by a resurgence of the Senussi sect. Tribes such as the Alwad Muhammad have started to show their resistance to the regime more clearly. Raids in Ottoman garrisons, refusal to pay taxes, and be conscripted have caused drastic issues for the few remaining forces in the region. A military expedition from the coast would could restore order to the region, but with the large economic crisis still reigning, many wonder if it wouldn't be best to withdraw all garrisons and grant the region de facto self-rule. In Tripolitania, there's a far less animus to abandon the region as a valuable date. Production of Fezzan is essential in a nation with still little rainfall. Say in the troops, increase Ottoman garrisons in Fezzan. Is this really worth the price? Send in the troops! Yeah. Hey, look, Benghazi. None. Oh, that's good. Tripoli is none. Yeah. Hmm. Aleppo. How's Aleppo doing? Very low. Increased attacks in the Hejaz. Our momentary weakness is already showing the mark of its mark in the Hejaz, where delays in our payments to the tribal leaders have resulted in their retaliation. Caravans and pilgrims on their way to the holy cities are experiencing increased attacks from bandits and deserters. As the usual, escorts turn a blind eye. These attacks are causing great damage to the prestige of the Caliph, and may be best to court the tribes with what little resources we have. Bring gifts to the tribes in honor? The Caliph does not wish to... does not bow to some goat herders with guns. Uh, so be it, whatever. I don't care. Hmm. Medium stuff. And Alash Orda is gone. Goodbye, Alash Orda. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Yeah, the Kurds. I wish we could just integrate them a little bit more. I mean, technically, yeah, is, they're all courts. Well, are they all, technically all court states? They are. Iraq. Well, they gotta go. Decentralized authority? No. So, a couple comments, though. Someone wants me to centralize as much as possible and reform stuff as fast as possible. We'll try. Uh, I can tell you that we're going to try to do that. Trying to centralize and reform. Someone recommends I join the Entente. Another person recommends I join Germany. We'll see what happens. We'll see how long Germany lasts against the Third International. But we'll see what happens. So, monthly population and more stability is always good. Ooh, that's not bad either. More construction people. Let's grab Restrict Foreign Exchange. 
regime. The lack of confidence in the Ottoman government has pushed many investors to selling off their liras in favor of foreign currencies in recent months to the detriment of its value by restricting our domestic investors' cap cap capacity to sell off their liras. We can strengthen our currency compared to the leading currencies of the world like the mark, the Reichsmark. Let's see what else. Claim all of Africa, or really mental Africa, get mental Africa under us, and play as Jabal Shamar, which sounds like an extremely difficult thing to do. But maybe as long as you're a puppet of the ultimate empire, you should do maybe okay? Cooperate with the ATF. Oh, you say ATF, and I'm thinking, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't know, man. Fed boys be doing federal things. But anyways. Uh, radio, why not? Actually, yeah, we'll go and grab radio, and then maybe start thinking about us growing our navy a little bit more, or potentially think about what our navy will look like. Because we need, do need to think a little bit ahead of time. Let's see. 11.73. Not bad, it's getting better. Support equipment is slowly getting better. Obviously, it's not great. Putting down resistance here is... Oh, man. Ser Serenaika. Not looking good, I would say. Come on. I wish this was like old world blues where we could just increase compliance much, much more. Oh, but it's not... Oh, my goodness. Why are you so high? Yo-Yo inspired unrest in some. The Yo-Yo, a brightly colored children's toy which rolls itself up and down with a piece of string held between the fourth thumber... Or thumber. Forefinger and thumb is causing unrest in the city of Sum after the city's Mufti has held a fiery speech linking the tour to recent droughts in the region and the Black Monday disaster. They say that while the people are praying for rain to come down from above, the yo-yo goes down and before reaching the ground springs up through the subtle pull of the string, although this explanation for recent misfortune in Surye seems even to cons seems even to conservative citizens completely complete baloney. The influence held by the Mufti has still forced the governor to consider his opinion, and a heated debate was prompted in the Council of Sam. Confiscate all yo-yos at once. It's a, just an instant toy. Uh, we are currently authoritarian Democrats. If we lower it by 2%, I get 1% more stability, which isn't great, but eh. Dude, it's just a toy, though. Ah, whatever. Get rid of the toy. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, the toy is causing a drought. How are we doing? Oh, oh, are we done? Oh, are we done training? Hey, not bad. They're repairing finally. I guess they're done training. For now, though, oh, it's not bad. We're getting some more fuel back, which is always good, obviously. Let's see. Ooh, restrict. Oh. Oh, Valonia's doing the Reichs back. Well, hello, Valonia. Let's come back over here and do restrict quality. Impose quality restrictions on imports. Why not? Well, as the government aims to create a strong local industry, it too often finds itself relying on goods imported from the Donau monarchy or the German Empire. Steel, machinery, chemicals, etc. are all imported, which makes us not only rely on these nations, but greatly hampers domestic goods as they can't compete with the cheap export products of a larger manufacturers abroad. Well, we'll see what happens. That's all I can say is, well, we'll just see what happens. Alright, now you guys can go and train. Since we got the fuel for it, you might as well, right? Good, good, good. Yeah. Netherlands has also joined the Reichspact. Okay. Well, good luck, Netherlands. Hopefully that'll make the Reichspact a little bit stronger. Obviously, the Republic of Poland's down here. What is Austria up to? Getting inflation under control. They're led by social conservatives. Not too much has changed. I hope someday they have dualism restored to be actually fixed. So we'll see about that. What is the German doing? Uh, Selim, the first airport open. Look at it in Habania, just 55 miles west of Baghdad, and named after the infamous Sultan Selim the first. The newly created military airport will serve as a center point for Ottoman air operations in Iraq. Adapted from British experiences in the Middle East during the Veld Creek, the use of air power in peacekeeping and patrolling the vast line has seen a rise over the last few years with an Iraqi flying corps trained at the Flying Academy in Mosul. Utilizing primarily local pilots, this is another step in the Ottoman program to shape the Iraqis as a dominant military power in the Ottoman Mashriq. Splendid. Splendid, splendid, splendid. Let's see, military expansion, pretty normal stuff, even though this looks quite different than when I played uh, as Germany. Seems like there's a lot less, actually. Which isn't cool, but whatever. Uh, the DDY absorbs the Palestine Railways, caused by a looming bankruptcy of the Palestinian Railways. The Ottoman said, or Ottoman state railways of the DDY have been able to purchase them and have reintegrated them with the main Ottoman lines. Already, plans are being made to swap railway gauges to tie better them, to tie them better to the existing Ottoman net and creation of of a direct line between Haifa and Jaffa, or, or maybe it's not Jaffa, John Darmerli, and no, Jaffa for both goods and ma passengers. He who controls the railroad controls the people. He who controls the media controls the people. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Not bad. Back up to 10. Not bad. And how is resistance looking in the Kurdish territories? 13, 15, 13. Not bad. That's better. Oh, yeah. It's still going down. That's good. Creation of the International Avant-Garde. Well, good luck with that. Wow. Nice. That's looking so much better now. 
Once we got enough compliance, it just... Nice. The Kamul Khanate, the clear one, Xinjiang clique. Actually, can you guys form China? That would be an interesting thing to discover. Yulbars Khan. Uh, well... Maybe. Xinjiang administration. Increased constitutionalism. The kind hand. That's cool. Because I want to balance the budget as fast as possible. Open the Toprak Masulari Office. According to the law number 3491, this agency will prevent abnormal decrease or increase of the wheat prices against producers and consumers to protect and regulate the wheat industry, to import or export wheat when necessary, to monitor wheat production trends and market movements in the world, to establish milling facilities and bakeries in locations to be determined to carry on similar tasks. We get monthly population 20% and more stability. How much monthly population do we get right now? 537. Not a lot. And how are these guys doing? Rykov. Rykov. Well, I think we did this yesterday too, or in the last video. Research investments. Khalid Bakdash takes over the Arab Syndicalist Party. Leaving the nation for the commune of France in 1930 to avoid persecution by then ruling OHF administration, Khalid Bakdash has enjoyed the education in the French capital itself and could be seen amongst many influential leaders in debates concerning the expansion of syndicalism to the Orient. Now that he has returned, it would be surprising no one if he were to push a similar program to what he encountered in France, but local authorities are not really concerned by his presence, as the lacking of any industrial proletariat in the Arab world makes it almost any support for cynicalism impossible. Good luck. Well, don't wish him good luck. Just tell him to go home. And not home here. Home somewhere else. Looking better on guns. Oh boy, Jamal, Jamal Shmar. Ooh, can I send volunteers? Oh, we can send volunteers. Okay, finally, how many volunteers can we send? A whole one! So we send one dude. Oh, what the heck? Oh. Ah, I see. Now we could send a cavalry dude, which wouldn't be bad. We could send an infantry dude, but because we're fighting in the desert, it might be best to send a dude who's got some tanks. Or at least a cavalry dude. Let's send one cavalry dude, why not? Actually,. Some of you guys... Uh, I might have converted everyone then. No, we didn't make any divisions, because one of our division templates has... Uh, one light tank in it, but whatever. Uh, Desert Fox would actually be pretty good, but I'm not going to use him because he's an old guard, and I really don't like old guards. Alright, uh, Jabal Shamar. I think that's a guy, right? Yep, that's him. That's the dude. Oh, we can't even send you planes, can we? Yeah, we can come over here, but that ain't gonna do anything. War on the peninsula after the Valkyrie and victory on a sublime state over the Arab revolt, we reasserted our hold over the tribal hinterlands of the peninsula. The Saudis, having fought against the Porta during the early parts of the war, flipped sides near the end and joined in the repression on the Hashemites and the Hejaz. Continuous bickering between our two tributaries over complete control of the peninsula, however, never ceased, and ever since the fall of the British Empire in 1925, the Saudis have built up their strength to deliver their death blow to the Rashidi dominated Northern Federation of Emirs. As both sides pledge full allegiance to the Caliphate, and our resources are thinly spread and depleted due to years of war, we have little interest to intervene in the conflict. Tribes in Hejaz, Ma'an, and the House of Al-Sabah in Kuwait, however, are less complacent about the situation of pledged support to the Rashidis to quell the Wahhabist plague once and for all. Ottoman Gedami in the region, or is it John... is that the one? Ooh, that's the words right there. In the region of warned us of a large group of young Arab men setting off on horseback into the desert, armed to the teeth, and are warning us that we might have issues demobilizing these volunteers should they return, and that the flame of Arab independence may continue within these men. It's not like we can stop them from going anyways. Oh, crap, did I do the wrong group? Ooh. Gendarmerie. Oh, gendarmerie. I always pronounce that wrong. Always. I might have sent stuff through the wrong group then. Were you guys under us as well? Well, you guys like us, so probably not. Actually, how is uh, the Saudis doing? East Turkestan? Well, good luck with that. A land of faith. Saudi hegemony. Huh. Fulfill our destiny. Yep, we gotta put these suckers down. And you guys can't do anything because you're still technically within our lands, which sucks. Yeah, you can't do anything here. There you go. Keep training, though. Keep training. That'll be good. A sunny day in Izmir. Upon request by his friend, the Wali of Izmir, the Grand Vizier had scheduled a visit to the Greco-Turkish city earlier this week. Warnings that a potential retaliation strike for its progressive reforms may be imminent. The Ali I Amniyet 
his mentee had asked Kemal not to go until the situation was fully under control. Confirmation of a rumored attack was given three days later when a known criminal in Bursa was apprehended drunkenly blabbering about a vast conspiracy network he was part against the Grand Vizier and he was who was given the order to terminate Kamal's life. Further investigation by Ali E. Emniyat, his metis, ultimately cleared the situation up as a man's imagination and the visit was scheduled two weeks later. A few days before the convoy would reach the city, further troubling reports started as the surface as a Jean, was it, gendarmerie apprehended two young men associated with the old special organization near the town square. Once again, these were waved away as pure coincidences by the Ali I. Emniyat, his metis. Uh, Mati, Matai. As the Grand Vizier entered the city yesterday afternoon and was greeted by the Wali, all seemed fun. Earlier today, however, during a grand speech, the Vizier was supposed to hold for a massive crowd which had come out to meet the man himself. Two quick gunshots rang through the crowds as the Grand Vizier fell to the ground. Jean d'Armerie immediately intervened and were able to catch a predator, a perpetrator, a young man of Armenian descent whose immediate motive seemed to have been revenge for the Armenian genocide. Mustafa Kemal was immediately rushed to the hospital, but the situation remains far from stable as increasing health issues over the years have greatly impacted the life of our Grand Vizier. This is a tragedy. Oh boy, there goes stability. Hey, our guy showed up though. If that's the case, I'll start with you guys. And I know these guys are using military police as well, so actually we're going to duplicate this. Now these are the garrisons. Cool. Now let's go and change this as well. There you go. Same exact thing. Do we have any extra artillery pieces? Yes, we do. We're going to take this off then. I love that, but there you go. How much support equipment do we have? None. Okay. So you're going to cut these guys off. That's not good. If we can hold these guys in place, that actually would be kind of ideal. Ooh, how many? We might not win here, though. Because we're suffering attrition and they're suffering attrition. We have six battalions and they have up to seven, I think they said. Up to eight, wow. Uh, so the Bayard Pasha assumes emergency control of the OHF. From the beloved leader Mustafa Kamal Pasha, in a condition prohibiting him from further leadership, a power struggle is starting to unfold within the OHF as the unexpected strike and the stubborn will of the Kamals not to appoint a successor has left the party divided and squabbling amongst themselves. Hardline elements who have enjoyed the favor of Kamal more and more over the past few years have pushed Izmet Pasha forwards as his successor, whilst the more moderate wing has decided to throw support behind Ali Fuat Pasha. Rumors have also surfaced that Field Marshal Fev, uh, Fev, Fev Z Pasha may be trying to take the title for himself and his wide support amongst the military class who still form the backbone of the party has both sides scared. In the meanwhile, the close friend support of Kamal Bayar Pasha has assumed emergency powers whilst the nation holds his breath unsure of what may follow the symbol of ultimate patriotism perishes. If we could win here, great. I might, if we don't win here, I might consider going up north and smashing these guys up here, so. Because uh, I don't want these guys completely destroyed. That'd be very, very bad. Balance of budget, though. When the Ottoman Empire collapsed under the strain of the debts that had racked up during the Crimean War, an international organization called the OPDA, Ottoman Public Debt Administration, essentially took over our economy. The disgrace and damage it caused remains a vibrant memory in the minds of many Turkish economists who have since have sworn to maintain a balanced budget at all costs. So hopefully we can get rid of the economic depression, which would be very good to get rid of. The death of uh, Mustafa Kemal Pasha. Oh crap. As his condition remained unstable and on the edge between life and death over a week, many were starting to lose hope that a quick recovery was imminent. Finally convinced that his end would come, he summoned a few of his closest friends and, and his adopted daughter Sabiha and started writing his will. Upon signing his signature or putting his signature below the text, all medical bulletins were stopped and the final hours of the vizier started to unfold. Flanked at his bed stand by a secretary, three Turkish doctors, and the commander of the guard, he addressed his final words to Dr. Neset Omer. Alex, Aleikusemal, peace to you. The Muslim replied to a greeting. At the end of 5 a.m., Ghazi and Grand Vizier Mustafa Kemal Pasha blew out his last breath. His friend Sal Sali, Sali would later burst into this room and upon seeing the body of his patron step outside and shoot himself in the chest. Within the will were his wishes to bequeath all his property to the party with a monthly stipend for his sister and a curious note about his ally is Met Pasha to whom he left the sum necessary to fund the education of his children knowing that the man had little riches. More infuriating though is that he stubbornly refused to name a successor and when his secretary Hassan Riza Bey attempted to extract an oral testament he was stopped by Salal leading to great tumult against the leading cadre of the party. Parliament in Constantinople or Istanbul was quick to respond as a day of mourning in a joint statement thanking the man for his actions during the war was issued written out to Hal Askar Ghazi, the savior of Ghazi, the holy warrior. No such celebrations were to be found in the OHF headquarters, though, as the final passing of their leader has led the power struggle to explode into the open. Let us wait for the defender of Gelabolu, the line of Antep, and the Ghazi of Maras. Um, are we still winning here? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, they're, they're bringing these guys back, which is great to see, so I think it's just best to hold on to here. 
because... Oh, they're still going to lose anyways. Oh, it might be best to wait. Go here. Actually, no, you're not allowed to move. Because if they take Hal-El, everything's pretty much lost, so... We're not going to move. Why? Oh, we're not... We might not be able to win here because this is not looking very good. There's so many divisions compared to these guys. What the heck? The OHS starts falling apart. Struck by the sudden departure of their leader and his refusal to mark a worthy successor, factions have started to form within the party. Broadly speaking, split between the hardliners under Ismet Pasha, the Democrats under Ali Fuad Pasha, and the military establishment under Fezi Pasha. Many of the other party members have decided to decide with either of the three and are mostly watching from the sidelines as a battle is fought. Ali Fuad Pasha, portraying a version of modernization based on the multi-party system with democracy at every level, has by some of the hardliners seen as a traitor to the revolution they are supposed to be bringing to the nation, especially as programs of decentralization and loosened state control, are receiving much opposition from within the party. Former Brigadier General Kazim Karabakir, however, and others such as Rauf Pausha see in his message the future of the state and the only way to avoid decay into a full dictatorship. In the other camp, still under the unsecure leadership of Ismet Pasha, plans are made to stick close to the plans uttered by the former Grand Vizier about the progressive vanguard leading the nation into a new era, and a strong guiding, guiding hand by the state until the Ottoman people are ready for self-government. Sources indicate that even though the position of Ismet within this camp is still shaky. Many military aligned party members have shown their preference to this approach. Oh, crap. Oh, man. Stick to the plans uttered by the Grand Vizier under Ismet. The other guy, while I like the idea of decentralization, that's not what we want to do, probably. So, Ismet Pasha. Please don't lose. Hey, you came back here. Nice. Oh, do you have a field marshal we can maybe use here instead? Ooh, you, you know what? You're a desert fox. I've got to use that. So... Union Syndicalista achieves Italian Majority. Oh boy. So you should actually get a bonus to defending and attacking now. Oh my goodness. And it's still in the desert, which is not bad. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to win here. Oh my god, we almost got cut off here. If they went the other way, that would not be good. Uh, trying to help out Halil or Jabal Shamar. Not very smart. Or good, at least. The marshal holds on. Okay, France always needs a strong hand. Okay, so they cut him back off. Good. That's good. Just don't let them. No! Democrats leave the OHF. Not, ex not unexpectedly, the appointment of the Ismet Pasha as a new party leader has led to great resentment from the Liberal Party members. The harsh course that seems to be now dominant within the party is former close associates of Mustafa Kemal, such as Ali Fuad Pasha, Salal Pasha, and many others forced into abandoning the OHF they helped form and work together with the former rival uh, Kazim Karabakar Bakir. Secretary General of the party, Recep Bey, has already open, openly condemned the new party who is currently going by the name of Democratic Party, a clear comment on the authoritarian side of the OHF, and is trying to turn public opinion against them. Aware that the window of opportunity is rapidly closing the current dominance of the OHF over parliaments unlikely to last, he has also been pressuring his meant into tightening the belt, shutting down his upstart party, and to centralize the state around the OHF before the majority in both parliament and this army starts to decay. Traitors. Oh boy, we are a nation in crisis. At least we're holding on to this for now. What we could really try is actually come down here and circle somebody, but I don't think we have the forces to do so, and they're already moving out. So, the nation in crisis. The OHF was not the only organization hit by the sudden departure of the Grand Vizier, as a lack of leadership is starting to cause great troubles across the lands. The organization responsible for the assassination is still at large, and many are requesting or questioning how the Ali I Emniyat Hizmeti failed so catastrophically catastrophically in defending the Grand Vizier. Rumors of a conspiracy reaching the upper echelons of the eternal state are spreading quickly as former friends look at each other in suspicion. Reset Pasha, Secretary General of the party, has therefore been pushing Ismet Pasha to enact the so-called maintenance of public order decree, which would give nigh unlimited executive power to the Grand Vizier. Seen by many in the party as a way to permanently shut down any attempts of opposition and the next step in combining party and state, this can be regarded as a path of no return and is likely that the political scene will take decades to recover from the damage it could cause. The decree is enacted. Woo! A lot of reading. Well, pass the maintenance of order. While placing a vilayets under martial law, reeling in the Anatolian vilayets. Ooh, decrease. That's not bad. Ooh, we can do that one too. Decentralize centralize more stuff. That's not bad. Extend authority over the Kurds. Oh. This is about to get very, very messy. Yeah, I don't think we can win here, but as long as we can... We're probably going to lose the division, let's be real. But whatever. Conflict in Sulaymania. The province of that S-word has always been a point of trouble for the Walis of Mesopotamia. Inhabited by a strong Kurdish majority, many of their sheikhs and agas, aghas refused to implement the new reforms and concede authority to Constantia, and instead hold on too strongly, strongly to tribal allegiances and Kurdish tradition. Darkoman expansion towards eastern Mesopotamia, the searing exodus, and the discovery of oil near Mosul and, er, and Kirkuk has upset the delicate balance of the region with various groups who are attempting to take control over the territory. Instead of Kurdistan, great rivalry also rules as the various tribes are involved in a near-constant state of internal conflict based on family, language, and sectarian lines. 
As the Ottoman state has no desire to let one Kurdish group get stronger than the others or let them find common ground between, besides the Padish, Padishah, this struggle is often encouraged by authorities in Mosul to, to, to the detriment of both the Kurds themselves and the remaining Assyrians and the Turkomans, who are often victims of Kurdish offenses. Their division keeps them docile. Hey, let's uh, unrest. So, uh, the... Fevzi Pasha announces his ambitions. Not only the chief of staff of the Ottoman army, but also the hero of the Velt Creek, Fevzi Pasha, has announced his ambitions to enter the politics fully. The move by the Pasha, a longtime friend and former colleague of the late Mustafa Kemal, is seen by many as unexpected, as a man has not shown much inclination to join the political battlefield, preferring a real one, is much, very much a testament of the fraternal relations held by the OHF and the Ottoman army. Recent whispers amongst the upper echelons of the party have it, however, that Kemal called him to the side just before his untimely departure and instructed him to lead both the party and the Ottoman nation as a whole further down the path they both envisioned. Going in, however, against the loosely kept rule barring officers from holding both positions in the Ottoman, Ottoman parliament, it remains unclear whether this newly announced candidacy for a party leadership will also include an earlier retirement from his form, former position. Known as a reasonable but also disciplinary man, some fear that he may be stirring the nation down a more authoritarian path with the closer relations between the army and the state. Fails the vote. Um, I don't really know. Single party dictatorship. Hmm. Fails the vote. Well, we want to centralize. Well, how about we just he just takes over party leadership? We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens and have a good time doing so. Olson. Whoa. Olson was elected president of the U.S. Oh, we'll be watching your progress, but oh gosh darn. This is not looking good. This is not looking good here. Go and get some planning bonus of the milita military launches a coup. What many fear will become has been confirmed earlier today, as Fez Fevzi Pasha has officially declared the state of emergency po postponing elections and definitely closing parliament until further notice. Having both the army and a large part of the OHF network on its side, it seems unlikely that this will only be for a short duration, and many fear that a military dictatorship may be here to stay after the assassination of the Grand Vizier only a few weeks earlier. To counter possible resistance in the outer villa, yes. All Wal all Walis have been recalled to the capital to discuss further policy and likely to be replaced by military men loyal to the new regime. Over in Constantia himself, Ismet Pasha has been appointed Grand Vizier to ensure a steady hand in day-to-day -day affairs, but within the political circles, it is clear to most that he has mostly been appointed to a position of, as a puppet of Fev Fevzi's regime. Okay, well, things happen. I don't know. Dark times are upon us. State of emergency. Cool. Well, maybe not for some people. Hey, and you know what? At least we have balanced the budget. Now, you could say a lot of things, but at least we balanced the budget. That's good. Um, We'll get through this stuff later. It doesn't seem like there's honestly that much here. Oh, that's not bad. Ottoman internal market. That's not bad. More daily pickle power is something we could really, 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 really use. And another research slot, too, but... Recall the Wallis? Valis? Valis? I have no idea. Armed neutrality? What do we have? Institutionalized race? Race? Uh, Islam? Oh god, uh, arm oh there's arm neutrality, ooh we lose population, we lose stability, you get more war support, we lose defense, I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose that yet, reinforce size of Berlin, revise, revise the German bilateral agreement, embargo the international, no that's not bad, research initiative, vanguard in the south, <sighs> ooh that's not bad, I like that too, I like that a lot, more daily political power is not much, but you get 100 political power anyways, Ooh, we'll probably do this one and then start reeling in the stuff here. So, recall the Wallies. Complacency and the lack of enthusiasm amongst the ruling cadre has steadily led to a decrease in quality and ability of our Wallies or governors. If the Ottoman state is a prosper, where these corrupt, decadent, and unscrupulous individuals have to, be, have to be torn out and replaced by those loyal to the regime and its grand vision for the future. Nothing bad could happen from this, right? Right? Oh, and we're getting attacked. Oh, boy. Hey, we got two divisions here to help hold out, though. The military takes control over the media. In an unprecedented attempt, attempt to stop the spread of misinformation and ensure only one narrative can take hold, the military is taken today. Hold of the printing presses, radio centers, and other channels of communications with it. Info concerning the attack on the Grand Vizier is still severely limited and only dispersed through state bulletins. A wave of uncertainty and paranoia has spread across the country or the empire, with many in the urban areas amassing large supply reserves in fear of possible further instability. We have everything under control. Don't question the narrative. I have a good feeling things are going to collapse soon. Mechanical stuff, something happened. Didn't really care to see that, though. Let's go ahead and grab some fuel storage now. Uh, better. Oh, man, we still got to do that. We don't even have 1936 guns. What the heck? We got to get better guns. Better guns. We're working with garbage. How did you get encircled? Do you have... Oh, my goodness. Yep. Yeah. Maybe I'll play as Jabal Shamar someday, but... Oh, my goodness. So many dum-dums. At least you're learning, right? All right. Are you, are you getting XP? He's barely getting some XP. 
God, if they had an airport, we would have won, but maintenance of public order law. As a solution to the immunity of sitting representatives and to grant the executive powers necessary to thoroughly remove all possible opposition to the former Grand Vizier, the maintenance of public order law was enforced through imperial decree earlier today, granting the marshal nigh unlimited power and completely sidelining parliament for as long as the nation remained in crisis decided by the marshal. An opportunity has presented itself to the OHF to effectively eradicate all remaining opposition to their designs. Many desperados, veterans, and former members of the COP have already disappeared off the grid in fear of getting dragged into complicity, concerning the plot where others have already taken the coward's way out. See Ali Bey, okay, Kilik Ali Bey, one of these individuals who has reportedly shot himself after the Jean gendarmerie broke down the door of his home whilst others such as Kata Kamal have left the capital and hurried to escape arrest. Members of the HIF aren't spared either as a wave of arrests targeting them for possible complicity. Even though none of them seem to have any solid connection to the plot is shaking up the capital, newspapers are not following the party line are also shut down. Military training exercises canceled, officers temporarily put on leave and the residents of the Grand Vizier put under close guard 24-7 as paranoia of or as some see it. Political opportunism takes hold of the nation. None shall escape the law. Pass the maintenance of the order of law. Which is somewhere down here, maybe. I don't know. Oh, there's Ottoman Army. We can do that, too. But I think we got bigger things to figure out with right now instead of the uh, Army. And Navy stuff. Don't want to forget Navy stuff. So good luck, guys. This is looking at, like a mess in the Tribunals of Progress opened. Dub the Tribunals of Progress through the special emergency measures and the number of, number of tribunals that have been set up in Istanbul. It is mere and bursa to persecute all those possible involved in the assassination of the Grand Vizier, chaired by the Bald... Ali, a former lieutenant colonel in the Ottoman army and a former cup member himself, a list of men associated with the conspiracy keeps growing by the day as the megalomania and paranoia of the military establishment reach new heights. Try with a combination of charges ranging from complicity in the assassination, treason to the state, abandonment of duty, and more. It seems likely that the trials will be used more as a political play to silence opposition rather than to punish those responsible for the death of the Pasha. Most disturbing. Hey, political power. Nice. Or, uh, I mean, stability, not political power. Tribunals of progress. Not bad. Hey, that auto completed. Dawn of the Ottoman Renaissance. Oh, that's very cool. The research slot, more daily... Wow! Plus 0.5 political power? Not bad. Tribunal of Progress, Military Command. Although evidence of complicity is scarce for almost all of the, those brought before the judge, there remains a certain truth to the charges that many of them harbor sentiments to see the Pasha encounter an early demise either out of opposition to the OHF, abandonment during the closing stages of the Valkyrie, or because of close association with the former cop. Only seven men on the list, however, were able to be caught by the gendarmerie, as many others departed the country shortly after the failed attempt have gone into hiding in the vast hinterlands of eastern Anatolia, unfortunately for the tribunal. This also means that those who were picked up by the gendarmerie, gendarmerie carried the least gun, and although some links to the back room meeting almost five years ago were found, the content of said meeting and whether or not this could be associated with this attempt seems muddy at best. Persecute those only solid evidence, they're all guilty. And eh, we didn't need army XP, whatever. Liberal victory in Brazil, an upset for sure. Oh man, the Saudis know how to wage war. Which, let's not talk about modern stuff, but, uh, yeah, holy cow. Like, they're encircling, they're destroying stuff, oh, Jesus. Uh, or Allah, oh, oh my goodness. A tribunal of progress, opposition, leadership, during dubbed the Black Band of the Kara Seta, a wordplay on the secret organization called the Karakol Society, Bald Ali is dragged under the stage of many of the powerful figures that are still remaining of the Cup and its successor parties, often with close ties to the liberal entente. Benefiting from the occasion, however, the Ali has proposed to also target a variety of key members in the HIF leadership whose connection to any sort of plot is hard to prove, but who could possibly have accidentally cursed the name of the Pasha in the open. Within the OHF ho itself, however, it has become increasingly clear that overstepping the boundaries of justice to boost political goals may lead to a split, as various more moderate representatives have started to form a clique around the close friend of Kamal Ali Fuat Pasha. Persecutors are all guilty. This is going to end up terrible for us, but I want more political uh, party popularity, not political power. But party popularity. Oh my goodness. Halil. Yeah, this division is going to die. I'm so sorry. And bureaucracy. Even though the cup in the later OHF was able to infiltrate all ranks of the Ottoman bureaucracy, many of the higher posts remain inhabited by close associates of the Sultan IHF appointed candidates or disloyal cop members who distance themselves from its successor party. Now it seems clear that the OHF is steadily marching towards the establishment of a dictatorship with themselves at the helm, and an opportunity has presented itself to persecute these people and replace them with men loyal to the marshal. Both a massive undertaking and one to sure to risk the ire of both the Sultan and Ottoman Parliament. It may be wiser, however, not to act rashly here and wait until the parties entrench in a stronger way. Well, we might as well go all in, right? Might as well go all the way in. Now, can I centralize areas? I would love to centralize more areas. It's very low. Actually, do we have anything over here, actually? Increase the Ottoman stuff. Ooh, that might be a really good resistance. Our goes down by 25% while under occupation for 250 days, though. Increase integration of the Kurdish via Yats by 5%. Oh, we might. That's probably one of the few things that we can actually do. I'm going to take it. 
Jean Mar Jean Dar Jean Dar Marie Jean Dar Marie Jean Dar Marie a radio Shippies we got destroyers we got cruisers we got heavy ships carriers well since we have nothing for carriers I'm probably gonna go with heavy ship stuff then subs are not bad either so I'm gonna grab some of this clamp out armor thank you very much oh we have a ship a destroyer not great but whatever Oh god, I wish color buttons would be doing okay. Yeah, just do the subs. We shouldn't have too many fuel problems with subs doing their stuff. Right? We only get points zero six four a day, but that's okay. And we're about to lose. You know what? We're going to lose this group anyway, so if we retreat and they take their tower, we still get the division back, so. I'm so sorry, sorry Jabal Shimar, but security in the Vilayets to ensure chaos remains limited as far as possible in the periphery. Ismet Pasha has given the order to recall all wallets to the capital and to be given new marching orders. But benefiting from the occasion, however, some have suggested to use this opportunity to replace some of the less loyal governors with military yes-men and, and to, as such, increase control of our emergency government. The action would likely lead to great discontent amongst the Arabs, however, who may see this yet as another move of Turkish imperialism and a crisis they have no hand in. Keep the current ones. A few just ones won't hurt. Ah, they won't hurt anyone. We're pissing everyone else off. The Empire celebrates Eid ul Fitr. Today is the first day of Ramazan Bayrami, or the festival of breaking the fast. After fasting a month during Ramadan, all of Islam is celebrating this joyous occasion. In most households, the men attending morning prayers are at the mosque. Then they must come home to find a lavish breakfast prepared. It's also customary to eat their dates or some sweets before attending the prayers. For many households, this is the first breakfast served after sunrise in the late, night, in the late 30 days. In the last 30 days, the younger people in the households, sons, daughters, grandchildren, traditionally kiss the hand of the elders as the elders present them with a gift. Uh, the gifts are usually money or gold coins wrapped in handkerchiefs. The three days of celebration are organized in a hierarchical manner. The first, the first day is reserved for family members. It's tradition for the younger ones to visit and pray, pay respects to the elders. The more distant family and neighbors must be visited. This is the time for hugs and kisses. It's also the time for broken hearts to be mended if there are people who have had an argument Ooh, I always say this one wrong. Eid? I think it's Eid is considered a time to make peace. Another famous part of the festivities include the sweet taste of Turkish delight. These treats are often to guests who visit as well as to neighboring children who run from door to door expecting candy or cash. In addition, Ramadan's famous drummers visit neighborhoods in the morning and it's, it's customary for the residents of the street to tip the drummer for a service throughout the month. Eid Mubarak. Cool. Right, so we've got these guys. And you'd be able to buy that guy again who failed, but it's not really his fault, really. Uh, we'll put, actually, put both of you under someone else. And actually, for now, I'm going to put you guys all right here. Because I don't trust any of these guys, so. Oh, yeah, the Bulgarian stuff. But we'll, we'll do that a little later. And we're not going to train either. And we've got another focus. Oh, i got to get more political power right now. Ooh, the Privy Purse Holdings. Wow, there's a lot of lag. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, let's get this one for permanent more political power. More division organization, so. Marshal, here we are. As steadily developed to be a catchphrase amongst the allies of the military regime who see in the great... Fevzi Pasha, the savior of the Kamal's dream and a bulwark of stability and prosperity against religious extremists and socialist revolutionaries. Well, let's hope things go well. Guangdong click, color war, and Guangxi click, or Guangxi click. Good luck, guys. 0.15, who needed political power? Who needed it? Okay, so for these guys, I'm a little worried because you never know what could happen. So I'm gonna, actually going to extend this. I'm going to go from Beirut to, to Beirut, please, Damascus, all the way up to. Uh, I'm gonna go through Mosul, actually. Let's do it like this. Come on, come down. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Or something like that. This way, unless Iran wants to go to war with us, we, we'll probably lose Iraq. So be it, whatever. But, you know. You know, whatever. And if I have to get it, guys, so be it. Wow. We got points to command power day. Wow. Collapse of the Persian Gulf economy. Reports have reached the Wali and Basra that several of the Persian Gulf states have been hit especially hard by the economic depression in Europe, and this has caused shockwaves in their entire social structure. Many of these states, such as Dubai, are almost entirely dependent on the pearl fishing industry and have and have the European continent as their main markets. With the rise in popularity of cheaper Japanese substitutes, the market received its first hit during the 20s, but the conflict between this state and the middle European bloc ensured a steady demand for the Gulf. Now this demand is has almost overnight evaporated and the entire industry is on the brink of collapse. While this is a course of unfortunate for the Arabs in the region, the catastrophe has forced them to close has forced them closer to the Ottoman state and our internal market. Upon the request of several sheikhs and emirs, TPC, the Turkish Petroleum Company, has open talks to discuss the possibility of oil exploration along the coast and expand its operations in the Gulf. One man's loss is another man's gain. So increase arrest in different areas, but Basra will underscore decrease Hey, oh political power, not bad. No mind if we do. Of course, in the game, we can't do anything with it, but hey, whatever. Thank you, my boy. Not bad. Guns looking better, though. They're looking quite a bit better. 
Uh, I would like to do this, but Persia seizes Hengam Island. What? Although Hengam Island, just south of the Persian coast, on paper belongs to the Persian state, the island is de facto ruled by the Sheikh Ahmed, Ahmed bin Obald, Orbaldi, Orbaid bin Juma, the father-in-law to the Sheikh of Dubai. As part of their shift in foreign policy to take a more assertive and anti-Ottoman stance, the government in Tehran has decided to push their elected in the Straits of Hormuz. Earlier this week, the Sheikh and his entourage were expelled from the island, sent packing to their families in Dubai, and a customs post was installed proudly waving the Persian flag. Whilst a diplomatic objection has been made by our government against the Persian aggression, there have been thus far no plans to escalate the small border conflict to any further punitive actions. In Dubai, however, outrage against this move by Tehran has led many to question the capacity of the Ottoman government to defend the interests of the Gulf and their Sheikh for so easily submitting to the Persian ploys. This of the Persian beast is now satisfied, in which they will not be. I guarantee you, it's, they won't be. Increasing unrest on Bahrain. Prompted by increasing interest of the Persian government in the affairs of the Shia majority island of, off the coast of Hal Hassa. Al Hassa, there has been a noted increase in anti Ottoman and anti Sunni sentiment. Further coupled to the pro trade catastrophe in the weak response of the Sheikh of the decreasing living of standards and his population, the island has been rocked by a wave of protests calling for reform and equal representation. More disturbing than the Persian overtures, however, is the increase of radio sets turned into Radio Free Cairo, spreading Arab nationalist propaganda and calling on all Arab people to throw off the Turkish yoke. Most unfortunate. Alright, so at that point, here's what we're going to have to do. Here's my game plan. I already set this back up. We're going to actually go back further. We'll probably defend from here, Aleppo, all the way up into the mountains up here-ish. So this way, we're going to lose Iraq. We're going to lose Levant and all this area. I, fine, whatever. And just in case for this, these guys, because these guys are going to be crucial for what we're going to need. The way to do this is to do something like that. Something pretty condensed, honestly. Because once we can get have all the enemies attack our line through here, then I'm just going to enable invade Egypt, probably. Probably the easiest thing to do, just nearly invade. Arab officers complain about their positions. Although the Ottoman Empire, or military, is open to all ethnicities in the empire, the upper caste of the military establishment has remained almost entirely in Turkish hands, the great discontent of the Arab officers who have seen an invisible glass ceiling. Now the parliament has been temporarily dismissed, and Arab deputies no longer have a way to express their concerns. Some of these officers had hoped to play more important roles in the military administration with so far little success. Whilst many of these officers are lower ranks, some are questioning whether or not we should ex execute a round of promotions among the Arab staff to ensure that the Iraqi and Syrian armies remain under our control, pointing out that threat. Arab nationalist propaganda may pose on the wavering loyalty of these army corps. Others have suggested that a mere shuffle of officers around our various armies uh, may already be enough to mediate the threat by moving en many of the less dedicated Ara Arab officers to the Balkan and Caucasian fronts. They'll no longer pose an issue. You're general and you're a general. Everyone gets free promotions. Mm, no take. Ah, I'm going to go with this one. You're a general. Everyone gets free promotions. Heritage of political power, but we had nothing. We couldn't even use it anyway, so. You know, things happen. You know, actually, you know what? I'm going to you guys not do that. You guys are actually... Because I've seen people do this before, like, prepared for any sort of conflict. You guys stay around here. Just to take, just in case for that, and then do that. There you go. That's probably better. We're going to lose this anyways. Fine, whatever. So be it. I've already accepted that fact. This is almost turning into TNO, where there's so many events in reading. Because we were barely in 1937. But happy 1937, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. The Ottoman Empire is, well... It's going... Yeah, that's the best we can probably put it. It's going. And there goes part of China. Goodbye, China. Goodbye. Wow, you are a mess. Wow. And Russia's still at war with itself, which is fine. Question of the princely armies. Ganja Singe, cult of the marshal. Very good. Never man such a much public display. The popularity of the marshal amongst the Turkish troops has increased tremendously lately as his dedication to punish the murders of their beloved Ghazi has been received expe exceptionally well. Originating amongst the Constantia garrison, a soldier's song honoring the marshal seems to have spread to most of the Turkish divisions by now and has been received well by the marshal himself as well. Marasal biz baradayiz, or Marshal, here we are. The song is an interesting addition to the military music repository, with many of the older rep songs referring to the lengthy and costly campaigns in Yemen or other tragic events in the military history of the Empire. The army salutes its leader. Hey, we're sporting a paternal autocracy, don't mind if we do, and next we're going to go ahead and do Ruling the Arab Vilayets. Yeah, we could do that. I'm going to go with Anatolian Vilayets, probably. We want to at least keep one region under control, right? Many nationals see the entirety of Anatolia as one unit, but this couldn't be less true as a variety of peoples ranging from Bosnia to Kurdish inhabit its highlands. Furthermore, there is a divide between those living on the coast and those in the interior, often been left behind in favor of more prosperous re regions. Uniting these people under the notion of modern notion of Ottoman is thus our task. Uh, we could do that. Uh, more research people would not be bad. This is not bad either. Abolish the Macelle Code would not be bad. Reforming the system would not be bad either. Actually, that would be really good. But I want to make sure we can do stuff over here. Extend authority will be good. Membership, maybe. So now we get a whole .22. Hey, that's not great. But it could be worse. 
We can have belt armor, not bad. So we can do that stuff immediately. Let's get some interwar capital gunnery. We're gonna need some of that too. It's 37, I should have done more industry stuff, but whatever. Things are things are things are things. And I could train, but uh, we gotta save our guns as much as possible for right now. So, how many days left? We've got quite a few days. And what's the next catastrophe befall us? Actually, can we increase centralization here? No. Autonomous region, integration of villiers, 55% is better than 50. Um, okay. Actually, how can we do this stuff? Oh, declare. Oh, we could declare martial law. Target goes down with his manpower and guns. Uh, we can't do that. OHF loyalty program has to be at war. Oh, okay. Uh, Sharif Ali Haidar passes away. Opponent by the Irad during the initial days of the Hejazi revolt, Ali Haidar Shah of the Hashemai House and acted as Sharif of the Holy Cities for almost two decades before his death earlier this week. As the need of the office has been questioned repeatedly with most authority these days in the hands of the Hijazi Wali. Some are hoping to use this opportunity to not appoint a successor and as such end the tradition. Son of Ali Haldar and raised amongst the court in Constantia. Abdul Majid Haldar would be a successor, but has shown little desire for a position, preferring the lively streets of the capital to the dusty hills of the Hejaz. Activities abolish the Meccan Sharifate. That probably wouldn't be good. Medina. Oh my god, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see, Hejaz, Medina. Unrest will decrease, which would be bad. Oh, yeah. uh, they don't really care, probably. Oh, never mind. They cared. They cared a lot. <laughs> oh, man. That might have been bad. Whoopsie. Oh, well. Oh, I guess I didn't want to do it. Stand off in America. Ah, I see. Yeah, we can centralize it. We lose 10 political power. Revolt risk will increase. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, Subuk, Edam, completed an An Anatolia. So, built as a concrete dam on the Kabuk stream, the project was started in 1930 to control floods plaguing the Anatolian metropol me metropole of Ankara. Measured 25 meters tall, 90 meter 900 meters long, and made of 12 120,000 cubic meters of concrete, and with the aggregate for the concrete derived from volcanic rock in nearby areas, it is regarded as an important leap in the engineering prowess of the Ottoman Empire. Further attending the ceremonies, the Grand Vizier himself, who praised the engineers and construction workers for the labor, and has announced the project like it will crop up around the vast empire to provide necessary water management and remedy lackluster sanitation. Onwards we march. Yeah, that pissed off a lot of people down here. Very low, huh? Why not again? Is there anything we could do here next? Like, we're looking at all this stuff here. Not really. We're doing expanding the Tamara system, of course, but still. Cool. Oh! Oh, look at that! We got that one done! The nice! Reeling in the Villettes. Offer membership. Install loyal ad administrators, administrators' actions. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try that. Maybe. I mean, I do want to get down here quickly, because we need 20% more political power. That'd be really good to get through stuff, so... Let's go through here. So, abolish the Maselli Code. Following the suggestions made by the Judicial Commission, the time is finally coming to rid ourselves of the Maselle. On its new civil code, fully secular in nature, it will treat all Ottoman citizens as equals and show their desire to tear down the last conservative anchor points. Well, we'll see what happens. I just want more political power at this point. What is this? Combat Aegean Tax Paradises? Wait, why would you want that? Oh, you want to integrate places. That's why. Cool. Not bad. Not bad. Guns, increasing social inequality in Iraq. Iraqi society has always been divided between the city dwellers inhabiting cities such as Baghdad and Mosul, Beyudins roaming the vast deserts, and a cast of farmers working the lands between the Tigris and Euphrates. This latter group has, has, for the vast majority of its history, been separated from nearly all affairs bar their immediate needs, and has made use of the communal agricultural ground to satisfy their own and the needs of the city dwellers. Benefiting from almost non-existent authority imposed by the Ottoman Empire, who only did the bare minimum to maintain a semblance of order in the region, this group lived a poor but fairly content life. After the loss of our European holdings and the seemingly shifted loyalty of the many Syrian groups, the empires received a wake-up call no longer use uh, Iraq as a poor land. It was always regarded to be, but to shape it in the future of the sublime state. Starting from basically a clean slate, schools, roads, and a vast administrative network were pumped out of the ground in record time with the primary level school attendance doubling year over year. A new local elite trained and indoctrinated in the various Turkish academies was to further expand or extend Ottoman control over the cities whilst the Ottoman military academy set up in Baghdad to serve to create a loyal Iraqi officer corps. As the Ottoman control over the cities increased at an explosive rate, this same evolution cannot be seen, however, amongst the much larger population of peasants still living in the nearly same conditions as their ancestors had done for centuries. The Turkish educated elite However, backed by their allies and the Iraqi Walis, discontent with the low agricultural output has 
has had over the last few decades increasingly privatized and seizes communal land, forcing many of the former residents of into a sort of serfdom. Illiterate to the man, and never having interacted with government in the first place, this class has barely any defense against the money lenders and urban elite. The former toils and the elite's profit. Well, that sucks. I want to keep centralizing more. Oh, look at that. It's kind of nice. Hills. Can I centralize more? I like to piss people off sometimes. Yeah, I mean, we could do that, but nah, we good. That just, that just would not be worth it. Second American Civil War. Hello! Middle Africa, declare one Liberia, good luck. Yeah, we can't do that. Uh, oh well. <laughs> the very high. Just because we abolish the area doesn't mean you have to be pissed off at us, guys. And I have a good feeling we're gonna lose this anyways eventually, but <laughs> the revolt risk will go up, but if the Saudis oh, actually they, they, they made Saudi Arabia. But uh if these guys rise up against us, and then Saudis also rise up against us, then that wouldn't be bad. That would really wouldn't be a bad thing, so then we could just take them out. Actually, we could declare martial law right now. You know what? We could actually try that. Baghdadi students protest difficult maths questions. A couple schools in the city of Baghdad have bounded together in pursuit of a common enemy, maths. In some places, even supported by their teachers, close to 100 students have come out of the city streets to protest against the difficulty of their mathematics exams, which are enforced under their national curriculum. As not the first time this has happened in Baghdad, it's unlikely to be also be the last as the education ministry is ignoring their demands, claiming they are just lazy students and should stop wasting their time protesting and instead devote that time on their studies. Why do we need to see about that in national news? <laughs> I mean, I get it. I don't like math that much. Math is okay. Anything beyond, like, early, like, pre-calculus, I, I, don't ask me how to help you with that, but... Come on, guys. We got, we got bigger things to think about, right? Artillery? Let's get some better artillery. Land Ooh, I haven't even chosen a land auction yet. Ooh. We, we can't afford tanks. Mass assault's not bad, but probably not worth it. A grand battle plan would not be bad for us, but I'm gonna go spirit fire power. It's just, it's so tried and true. Oh, yeah. We could get better guns, but we're already out 8,300, so there's no point to really do that. Yet, so abolish the Missile Code. Proclamation of the Ottoman Civil Code. Replacing the Sharia Bay Missile, which had been in use since the start of the Tanzimat era during the second half of the 19th century, the new Ottoman Civil Code has included substantial differences concerning both the status of women and the influence of religion within the Ottoman society, which has already caused significant discontent in the more conservative areas of the empire. Following the rising feminist movement and the following po policies concerning ed co education during the 20s, the new Civil Code now officially recognizes men and women as equals, bans polygamy, makes legal marriage compulsory. Uh, and implements a wide variety of acts concerning personal freedom. A grand day for the Empire, and we shall conclude with one more focus with reform the Millet system. The Millet system was a creation to ensure that the Ottoman citizens who did not practice the Islamic faith could govern themselves, and as such, limit sectarian conflict. This has had this has been over the years, however, led to non-Muslim citizens almost completely detaching themselves from the Empire, and has encouraged the disasters that followed in the Balkans. With the new civil code, surely the system is no longer necessary? Regardless, though, uh, we're going to read this last event, and then we'll conclude the episode. When the Millet system was founded according to the national legend in the 15th century under Sultan Mehmed the Conqueror, the idea behind it was that a Muslim citizens, as Muslim citizens, were governed by the Islamic law, and so should Christian and other religious minorities be governed according to the laws of their own faith. It is unclear whether or not the system was actually used before the 19th century when Sultan Mahmud II split his non-Muslim subjects up into three distinct Millets, Greek Orthodox, Armenian, and Jewish. Bowing under international pressure, the emperor was forced to cede more and more power to these bodies after the tens of reforms in the late 19th century as the various great powers sought as it swore duty to protect the various minority groups of the empire. As the Millet system allowed for a plethora of special powers, such as the collection of taxes and the creation of new laws for the community, the citizens of these groups became less Ottoman by the day as the Europeans started influencing their day-to-day -day lives more and more, effectively attempting to rick them away from our empire. Pressure from the outside world, which we had no choice but to watch as a power of Constantia, over the Millets was reduced to practically nil. Efforts by the young Turks to fight back against the system and to abolish the dreaded cap capitulations which allowed European subjects in the empire to be governed according to European laws were only partially successful as none of the powers were willing to give up its vast influence within our empire. The end of the Valkyrie, however, brought a glimmer of hope for the reformists of the empire, as well as the blood of hundreds of thousands of Turkish sons whose dreaded capitulations were finally abolished as such, ushering in a new era of reform for the eternal state. The Millet system has survived regardless, though, as indecisive politics in the Ottoman parliament and the need of both coalitions to attract the Christian and Jewish vote have thus far thwarted any attempt at reform. Interesting. But regardless, if you enjoyed today's episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, we need more steel, and I'll see you tomorrow when things might come to a boiling point, and we might have a little bit of troubles as we'll say but thanks for watching guys and have a great great rest of your day